What up, it's Marcus Dynasty Dads. This is going to be a quicker video. I'm going through four of my favorite breakout players. And I'm going to give you examples of what I think they'll be able to accomplish in the 2022 season here. The first one that we're going to go with is a player that I feel like is going to be that ultimate alpha. He's going to go from a wide receiver to into that wide receiver territory. territory. I mean, we talk about the CD Lamb breakout. I think that this player has that same projection, except you're able to get him at least a full round later. And it is Michael Pittman. Now he's 6'4", 230, or 223 pounds. Uh, he's got a new quarterback. And I think Matt Ryan shows that he's been able to supply the alpha at a very high level. And if you look at what he did with Carson Wentz, I think Carson Wentz is a poorer quarterback. He had 129 targets. That is an amazing amount of targets. And if he, again, if he equals that with Matt Ryan, I think you're going to have some success here. 88 catches, 1,082 yards, and six touchdowns. I could easily see his touchdowns go up. I could see nine, ten touchdowns. And even if he doesn't get the touchdowns, let's say he gets julio fied and Julio is always the guy that could get a ton of yards and no touchdowns. I think that 1,082 yards easily jumps into this 1,300, 1,400-yard territory. We're talking about a guaranteed wide receiver one, in my opinion, if he stays healthy for the entire season. Health is always a factor. Uh, but he made a big jump, 500 yards to 1,000 yards, one touchdown to six touchdowns, only played 13 games his rookie season. Really, you look at his 61 targets bumped up to 129, if he has 130, 140, 150 targets, let's just say he has 150 targets, he's he could be that jump into that sphere of being a top five wide receiver in 2022. One of my favorite wide receivers. We're going to go to some running backs here. And so what I want you to think about is the Leonard Fournette situation. The Leonard Fournette situation was a situation where he became kind of undervalued, some injuries, switch of teams, and then all of a sudden became a breakout. I think a player that is an, on a, a kind of eh team, but you're going to start working into later into the year, you're going to have a, a guy who could be successful going into the playoffs, 27 years old, so a little old, it is Kareem Hunt. And so Kareem Hunt, let's look at the three seasons that he's actually finished. Uh, four, this is PPR, four, 11, and 10. Those are the three seasons that he's actually completed. So really, if he has health, He's going to be a successful running back, it seems like, in his past history here. And even in eight games, you look at a guy who had 400 yards rushing and five touchdowns. You double that, we have 800 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's, I mean, the touchdowns, that's going to be a little bit harder to replicate. And he had almost 200 yards receiving and no touchdowns. So really, you're looking at a guy. So if we combine everything together and kind of project it out, you're looking at 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns. That is really great compared to where he is being drafted right now. And he is one of the best running back twos on a team. We look at A.J. Dillon. We love A.J. Dillon. But Kareem Hunt is the pass receiving down back. And what is Cleveland probably going to be doing a lot of? Catching up in the game. And J Jacoby Brissett is a guy that will dump it off. Um, so Kareem Hunt, I think. And there is a chance that he goes to a different team. Let's just say that you find an injury. Uh, something happens. Uh, to, uh, or maybe Atlanta starts actually doing well, or s some team loses their main running back. Let's just say Najee Harris's injury ends up being re aggravated or something. I could see Kareem Hunt all of a sudden being a Pittsburgh Steeler or something along those lines. Let's say Baltimore still has a mess and they want Kareem Hunt. I know money wise, it could be a big difference, but there is an outside chance that he actually goes to a different team and immediately becomes an RB1. So that is something to definitely note. I am all in on Kareem Hunt. Another mid to late round running back. And we, we hear about this Damian Pierce love. And so I think a guy that has just a, as much ability to break out as Damian Pierce, who is a running back, who will probably not be in the receiving game a ton, but has shown success when healthy. It is Rashad Penny. And Rashad Penny is being drafted later, but let's just go through that final six game stretch, three, four, five, five game stretch um, in Seattle last year. So this is his rushing yards, 137 and two, 39 yards. Oof, that one hurts. 135 and one, 170 and two, and 190 and one. I mean, he was averaging eight, seven, eight, four, nine yards a carry. I mean, we're not assuming that. But we are assuming if we if we can get some of that with Ken Walker, especially beginning the season slow with his hernia surgery, I think Rashad Penny is an absolute steal 
And really, you can almost get both of them. You could get Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker in redraft. I see that a ton. In fact, I did that back to back rounds. I took Kenneth, I took uh, Rashad Penny and then Kenneth Walker on the way back because honestly, if you're getting the Seattle running back at this point, that is cheaper than the Damian Pierce. Uh, potentially, you can get a late flyer on Rex Burkhead, who I think is one of the great deep sleeper guys. I mean, we can talk about uh, Rex Burkhead at a different point, but he's the receiving back back in Houston. I think he's a great steal. But Rashad Penny, 26, always been successful when healthy, and health has been his always his kryptonite. Um, so just looking at somebody that you're not going to get many receiving yards. I mean, his last six games, he had six catches. You're, you're limiting upside, especially in PPR. Uh, but a guy, especially in half point in standard, a definite steal. And you're going to see a lot of rushing. Seattle is just known for pounding the rock. And they cannot trust Geno Smith. There might be some times that they're down. But they were down against San Francisco and, and the Rams and Chicago. And, and so we'll see if this continues on and is a path. And they always seem to battle their division close and like to run the rock. And that's six games. Six of the, the 17 games already. So the last guy that I love. And I'm 23 years old. Heisman winner. A guy who has surprisingly 916 yards and five touchdowns, Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith is being drafted so much lower than A.J. Brown. It is insane and ugly. And we talk about A.J. Brown, who is a guy that has not been much more successful than Devonta Smith off the NFL level. I mean, you're talking about A.J. Brown at 1,100 yards, and you have Devonta Smith at 916 as rookie. Now, if, he, if Devonta Smith just makes a small jump his sophomore season, just a small jump his sophomore season, he is going to be somebody that is going to be completely undervalued. You are getting a guy who is 30th and 29th in PPR, so standard in PPR. So let's just say wide receiver 30. You're getting a wide receiver 3, but you're drafting him at wide receiver 3. So you really, you can only get upside. A.J. Brown has battled health. What happens if his health goes down the toilet again? And uh, You're getting a guy who, again, is extremely, extremely talented. We are talking about the levels of Jamar Chase-type talent. I know that is very hard to hear and think about, but he was a collegiate wide receiver to the level of Jamar Chase when he was at LSU. I mean, Jamar Chase was amazing in college, but Devontae Smith was completely dominant at Alabama. I mean, just watching the, the national championship game and the, and the, uh, CF, uh, the, the college football playoffs, I mean, he was unstoppable. I mean, this guy looked like a video game. He was putting up video game numbers. And so again, Devontae Smith is one of my favorite wide receivers for having a bounce back sophomore season. So again, let me know what your big, huge breakouts here are in the middle to late rounds. All right. This is Marcus Stanley Simple Dads. Peace out. We'll see you again tomorrow.